ಓಂ ಜ್ಞಾನತಿಮಿರಂದ್ಯಾನಂಜನ ಶಲಾಕಾಯ ಚಕ್ಷುರುನ್ಮಿಥೇನ ತಸ್ಮೈ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರುವೇ ನಮ I offer my respectful obeisances to my spiritual masters, the Divine Grace, Sesi Bhakti Vedanta Swami Prabhupada, who rescued me from the darkest regions of ignorance. And I offer my obeisances to all the Vaishnavas, Vaishnavis who are present here today. You are all great souls, and I feel, feel very honored to be here with you today on this very special occasion when we um, come together to discuss Krishna, the Supreme Personality of God. This is the preoccupation of those who have realized the ultimate goal of life. It's very practical to come together to hear about Krishna because the human body is a special machine, technolo- technologically advanced, even more so than the iPhone 10. does more. It actually is uh, tuned to hear vibrations that come from the spiritual world. And not only to hear them, but also to respond to them in ways that are, allow one to be self-determining in life. Other species of life can hear transcendental vibration and they will get benefit. But they, they don't have the power to be self-determining. For instance, in the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says, Shakno ti hai vyasho dhum praksharira vimokshana kama krodo bhavam negam sayukta sa sukhinara He says that one who has developed the power, oh, by the way, if you have a cell phone, please turn it on. And you can stay in the room if you have a cell phone. And the reason is, tonight, Uh, we're on a special marathon drive uh, for um, giving the Bhagavad Gita to the world. And everyone here tonight will have the opportunity to uh, sponsor as much as they wish. We will not put any restrictions on how much you'd like to sponsor uh, full cases of Bhagavad Gita. And so we have a special deal, especially for those who have cell phones, and that they go off in class, that you automatically get one case. <laughs> Which is how much, Neil Mano? One only. Only. For cell phone, if it goes off, then you can have it for 107. <laughs> Does everyone agree? Yes. Okay, anyone who doesn't agree, please sit in the lobby so we know that everyone agrees. So if your cell phone goes off, your cool is ours on or off? <laughs> Turn it on. <laughs> Then you pay 107 and you get a full set, a full case of Bhagavad Gita and I'll make up the dollar. <laughs> okay? I was saying that... What was I saying, by the way? Sukhinara. Sukhinara, yes. I was uh, onto a verse. And this verse... says shakno ti hai vyasho hum praksharira vimokshana that one who is able to develop the power and this is a kind of a shakti shakno ti hai vyasho hum to withstand the urges of desire and anger praksharira vimokshana before you leave the body this person becomes a happy human or a sukhinara I bring this verse up it came to mind because of the way in which Krishna describes the ability to control oneself, which I'm saying is a kind of self-determination. It's the finer abilities of the human being to understand what is favorable and what is unfavorable. And to also understand the concept of consequences. That whatever we do, we're responsible for and we get the we get we have to suffer and enjoy the result of what we do and therefore the scripture gives all kinds of categorical advice about what's good to do and what's not good to do for instance in a general way the shri shri panishad says anyare bhurasambhavat anyana bhurasambhavat 
iti shushum tiranam yenas tadvita chakshire that one result is attained by worshipping the supreme cause of all causes and another result is attained by worshipping that which is not supreme. Also, anyarebuhur vidya ya anyarahura vidya ya iti shushum tiranam yenas tadvita chakshire when result is obtained by hearing real knowledge and a different result is obtained by hearing about nations. So there are categorical differences in the ways that we engage our mind and senses. And by following the scripture, especially the Bhagavad Gita, one can determine for oneself the best ways in which to utilize the senses in the mind to find the highest, to attain the highest result in life. And Krishna, of course, presents that information to us and then gives us the free will to choose which one to do and how to utilize the knowledge. So, when one does choose to take the information and utilize it properly, it's a great victory for the soul. One actually becomes heroic, even for small acts of adherence to the, to the scripture, the Bhagavad Gita. Prabhupada, Srila Prabhupada describes in a purport in the fourth canto about how there are two kinds of heroes in this world. Uh, one uh, type of person is considered heroic because of his ability to exploit the material world. We see examples of this. Sometimes people are honored because of their ability to make a lot of money or to manipulate the material energy in various ways. You can all probably think of you know, various people who have been honored in the world in that way. But the Gita and other, uh, others of our scriptures don't consider these to be actually heroic. Those who are able to take in the advice of the Bhagavad Gita and then willfully apply it in their lives become heroic in the true sense. This is actual progress and, and actual victory to be able to self-determine and to take wisdom and then act upon it. Krishna says in the Gita, Raga Dvesha Vimuktaistu Vishayan Indriyasharan Atma Vashara Vite Atma Prasada Marigachati. And that is one who follows the regulative principles of freedom is able to attain the full mercy of the Lord. And that kind of mercy that one gets from adhering to the teachings of the Bhagavad Gita is considerable in the next verse. Krishna says, Prasade Sarvadukanam Hanir Asyopajayate Prasanna Chetasoyashu Bhuti Pariyavatishtate. When you get the mercy of the Lord, all your misery goes away. That means, Prasade Sarvadukanam Hanir, your, your mercy is, your, excuse me, your, your misery is diminished. Prasanna Chetasa means your consciousness naturally becomes happy. By this simple act of applying one's free will to Krishna's instructions in the Gita and trying to follow them. Even if you're not perfect at it. We read about that earlier in Potomac. In 3.31, Krishna says, Ye me matam idam nityam anutishtanti manavam. He says, if you just follow my instructions carefully, then you'll become perfect. And the Prophet mentions in the purport, if one accepts that Krishna's instructions are axiomatic and that they are perfect and appreciates this principle, even if unable to follow it perfectly, that person will become perfect. That's how powerful the instructions of the Supreme Personality of Godhead are. And one of the symptoms of the kind of victory that one achieves, even in small degrees, by following the instructions of Krishna in the Bhagavad Gita, it's described in the verse that I'm reciting at the time, prasadi sarva dukhanam hani rasya prasanna chetasa, 
means that one naturally becomes joyful. There are a lot of ways in which people try to become joyful in the world that don't include controlling the senses. Can you think of any of them? What is it? Watching football games. Watching football game, right? What else? Sitting in nature. Sitting in nature, yeah. Anything else? There's only two. <laughs> what if you sat in nature and watched a football game? Because <laughs> that would be the next conclusion. I mean, there's lemon and there's lime, and then you have to have lemon lime. In the material world, they try to make so many combinations in order to get a new taste. Kalad Mara says, this is punak punas charvita charvananam. It's chewing that which has already been chewed. Let's try it in a different way. 31 flavors and so forth. <coughs> Nothing against variety. The point is that there's an endless endeavor to try to find a little satisfaction from the material nature. But it's short-lived and not easy to attain. And often leaves one with the opposite result that one was uh, working towards. In fact, the very mentality of trying to find satisfaction through material happiness is uh, said by Prahlad Maharaj to be folly. He says that at the moment you try to think about finding happiness in the material nature, that's when you start suffering. He said inevitably you get the opposite result you're looking for. On the other hand, if one simply tries to uh, follow Krishna's instruction, then one gets prasana chetasa, which means that one feels joyful within one's consciousness, naturally. Because our constitutional position is to satisfy Krishna. And one of the ways in which to satisfy Krishna is by listening to his instructions in the Bhagavad Gita and then trying to follow them to the best of our ability. And inexplicably, well, it's, it is explainable, but, but counterintuitively, uh, we feel joy from that, from that little victory that we feel. It may even be behind closed doors when we have an opportunity to follow Krishna's instructions or not follow his instructions. Have you ever come into that kind of situation? Behind closed doors, and you have an opportunity to either follow the instruction or not follow the instruction. And if so, I'd like to hear what that circumstance was. Anyone? You're behind closed doors. Where might that be? In your room? Yes. I have somebody who's working with me here. What is your name? I like you. Jay. Dave? No, Jay. Jay. I like Jay. He's got a little Utsahan. So, behind closed doors, right, Jay? And then you have an opportunity to follow Krishna or not follow him. Who would notice because you're behind closed doors and nobody else is there? But you decide to follow Krishna's instruction. Anyone? Yes. Your name? Edwin. Edwin. Thank you, Edwin. Do we have a microphone for Edwin? If not, we can take up a sponsorship. Someone can run down and get one. I can project fairly well. I know, but we're on the internet. So I'll have to rep repeat what you say. Edwin, go ahead. Uh, well, uh, when chores or duties of the day are done, I can find myself in my room. I can read Bhagavatam uh, and Chaitanya Charitamrita, or I can watch a show on Netflix. Okay, so when all his other duties for the day are done, he's by himself in his room. He can either read Srimad Bhagavatam or he can watch another kind of show. And he gave the example of Netflix. Very good example. Because I mentioned earlier about Vidya uh, and Avidya. There are two choices always available. There are two vibrations always available in this world as well. And we have the choice between them. In fact, all that we really have in this life is our choice, our free will of where to place our attention. Think about it for a second. What do you really have? What you have is what you get to keep and what's quintessentially yours. So anything that we've accumulated, including this body and the hair, you have hair, right? Say yes. 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 It's not yours. <laughs> That's a shock. You have nails, right? Yes. 
They're not yours either. And you don't get to keep them. But what you do get to keep is your attention. Because you're a conscious living entity and you have the ability to place your attention either in Vidya or Avidya. That's a choice. And so what you actually have that's meaningful is your choice of where to place your attention. So Edwin gave this nice example that I think everyone can relate to because information is available in many places. Wherever you go, you have access to various kinds of information. True? Yes. Say yes. yes. Thank you. And so you can choose between one kind of information and another. So my suggestion is that when one makes the right choice, and say in this instance, when you're in your room and you have the two things before you, and somehow you have the strength, the power to make the right choice in that instant, and you pick up the Bhagavatam rather than the, what do you use, a clicker, right? For the Netflix, or whatever it is. Then you'll feel bigger. You'll feel that you grew. You'll feel that you have internal power. You'll feel heroic. And you'll also feel happy. Prasanna means that you feel joyful by following Krishna's instruction. And finally, Krishna says, when you get mercy, when you get Krishna's mercy, buddhi parivatishtite means your intelligence becomes fixed. Intelligence means to know how to discriminate between matter and spirit. To see the difference between what's a favorable activity and what's an unfavorable activity. This is intelligence. People take intoxication, they lose their intelligence. They don't know what's good or bad. People in lower modes of nature, Krishna says in the 18th chapter of Bhagavad Gita, don't know what to do or what not to do. They take Religion is your religion, and religion is your religion. You get things backwards. This is not favorable for the soul. So one can take information from Bhagavad Gita on a daily basis, and then uh, through good association and developing determination, one, come, one can, by increments, begin to follow the instructions as one understands them and thereby develop a direct relationship with Krishna. Because as one follows Krishna's directions in the Bhagavad Gita, one feels reciprocation from Krishna himself. As Krishna says later in the Bhagavad Gita, ninth chapter, Samoham Sarvabhute Shunami Dveshos Dinapriya. What's the second part? When one, uh, although Krishna is equal, he gives us an equal opportunity to take uh, nations or uh, knowledge. He gives us an equal opportunity, but he also kindly instructs us what's the difference between the two. So if we inform ourselves, and then we then we make the right choice. This verse that I quoted just now, Samaham Sarvabhuteshu, said, although Krishna is equal, when we make the right choice, there's a natural way in which we are able to take advantage of Krishna's presence. And we actually enter into him. And he reciprocates with us, as he says in the 10th chapter of Bhagavad Gita, Tesham Satata Yuktanam. I'll say the first line, you say the second. Tesham satad yuktanam dadami puti yogam tam Yeah, in this verse, if one considers this verse, it's, it's a, a very personal proclamation by Krishna that those who make this sincere endeavor in devotional service uh, find themselves favored by Krishna. He, he personally gives a very choice information and intelligence to such a living entity of how to make further progress. And th- nothing succeeds like success. That's why Rupa Goswami says in the Upadeshamrita, don't follow the process blindly or, or, with, or without full attention. This is called Niyamagraha. Because when you follow it, you should do it very deliberately. 
and with full awareness of what you're doing so that you can feel the reciprocation of Krishna and you can also see for yourself that you're making advancement incrementally. And when you do see that advancement, then it's even more encouraging. And you'll, you'll uh, look for more opportunities to do the right thing. And then when one can put together a string of victories, that is, conquering the lower self by the higher self, again and again, one develops confidence and strength in devotional service, and one can continue to advance in this way, by living with the Bhagavad Gita, in the Bhagavad Gita. Nila Madhava Prabhu uh, mentioned that... <coughs> Did you mention? We, we, this, oh yeah, Chad, a chapter a day. I had read several times where Prabhupada wrote to his followers saying that read at least a chapter of Bhagavad Gita a day. He advocated <coughs> reading quite a bit. In fact, I was with the group that um, were distributing books in San Francisco in 1973, and we met Prabhupada in his room. And the temple president introduced us and said, these devotees are distributing the books. Here's how many books they're distributing. And Prabhupada looked at us and said, you must also read my books. I have not written them just for selling. He said, I wrote these books for you to read, to become pure devotees, and to go back to Godhead. He was very emphatic about that. And so, one of the ways that you can stay in touch with Bhagavad Gita is by making a vow to read at least one chapter a day. What it, the minimal in that is that keeps you in touch with Bhagavad Gita every single day. What is a day here in Baltimore? How many hours do you get? Hello? Because I just want to check. I check in various places to make sure. Still 24 hours. 24. You get 24 full hours here. And so, in, within a 24-hour period, if you chant, that's it, if, not if, when you chant, one chapter of Bhagavad Gita every day. Uh, meaning, at least the verses, the Sanskrit verses, or the translations. Either one of those two. Both are, are very edifying. For instance, if you read over and over again the translations, in fact, if you go through and just read one chapter after the next every day, you start to get a sense where everything is. And you'll be sitting, listening to a, a talk, and some will say, uh, they'll mention a concept, and you'll, you'll know right where it is, because you're oriented towards where Krishna said it. And you'll even start to remember the way he said it. And this is very beneficial for uh, developing the conscious mind for spiritual life. In fact, Krishna says in the Gita that one who reads this conversation, studies the conversation, in fact, between myself and Arjuna, worships me by his intelligence. And having this uh, fortified intelligence from reading Bhagavad Gita every day is especially important. And I'll give evidence from the third chapter of Bhagavad Gita. Everyone still okay? Yes. How come nobody's cell phone's going off? <laughs> you guys don't want any cases of Gitas or what? We'll do, we can do this the easy way or the hard way. You know? Okay, so Krishna says in the Gita, evam budi param budva samstab yatmana matmana jahi shatram mahabaho kamarupa durasadam he describes how there's a hierarchy. The senses are lowest, and above the senses is the mind, above the mind is the intelligence, above the intelligence is the soul proper. And then he says, by deliberate spiritual intelligence, one should conquer the lower self by the higher self. And the way in which to develop this deliberate spiritual intelligence, say deliberate spiritual intelligence. Deliberate spiritual intelligence. You're not all saying it, either that or you're mumbling it. Please say it again. <laughs> What? One more time, please, a little more. Deliberate, Deliberate spiritual intelligence, thank you. That's also called DSI. DSI. Deliberate spiritual intelligence. You get that by very uh, meticulously and consistently reading the Bhagavad Gita every day. This is one of the great secrets of spiritual life. And so, 
It takes only a few minutes out of your 24 hours. You have to calculate this. Sometimes people say you don't have time. That's not true. Everybody has time. It's not time, it's taste in all matters. Everyone gets to decide how they use their 24 hours. Let's get that out of the way first. You're, you're not, there's no exceptions. Every living entity has a choice. You've decided to use your 24 hours in a certain way. Don't blame it on time. It's a matter of how much taste you have. But you can develop taste by wedging your way in. And the way you wedge your way in is you start at a, at a small point, just like a wedge has a thin point, and you insert it somewhere in your very busy schedule. And then you push a little bit. And it starts to open up a gap. So the, one of the best ways to do this is to read the Gita every day. So if you chant one chapter of Bhagavad Gita, for instance, just the Sanskrit or just the English, how long will it take you? At the minimum. And what do I mean by minimum? Somebody tell me. No, I'm saying, Short how chapter. would one do the minimum? Short chapter. Short chapter. From this side of the room, which, which are the two shortest chapters in the Bhagavad Gita? 15 and 12, right. And a lot of people who do chat have memorized those chapters. <laughs> because they're starting at the minimum. They said, it's the shortest chapter, I'll read it every day and get it over with. And that's a way in which the mind may react to your new plan. You may introduce this tonight and say, guess what, mind? You might have a little meeting and say, guess what? We're going to have a little new program around here. We're going to chant one chapter of Bhagavad Gita every day. How do you like that? Like, what? What about all the other stuff I got to do? <laughs> but if you introduce this, this program, this protocol, and you do one chapter every day, you'll find that you start to get spiritual traction. You get the impetus to focus more when you're chanting Hare Krishna. Also, when you look out at the world, you'll see things through Krishna's eyes, through the way he's presenting, for instance, the three modes of mature nature and their various symptoms and characteristics. You'll be able to see that because of your imbibing Krishna's words in the Bhagavad Gita. And this is a kind of fortification that is absolutely necessary to survive in the world without succumbing to the lower na one's lower nature. Therefore, it is absolute lunacy to leave the house without having read one's chapter of Bhagavad Gita. Why would, why would one do that? Go out and risk one's uh, delicate consciousness in a world so fraught with distractions and outright pernicious vibrations that can destroy one's consciousness. Who would go out there without first reading one chapter of Bhagavad Gita? That's a valid question. I'd like an answer to that. Who would do that? Work with me now. Jay, can you help me out? Huh? Edwin, see, Edwin's got to go ahead. One who is ignorant of the Gita. One who is ignorant of the Gita, they know the Gita. What if somebody knows about the Gita, but then they don't read it? Yes, they're cool. They don't have a taste. They don't have a taste. And Mark Twain once said, there is no difference between some who, one who's illiterate and one who's literate but doesn't read books. So what's the difference? So there is a way in which we have the Bhagavad Gita, but we may not take full advantage of it. Does anybody agree with that statement? Yes. yes. In what way do you agree with it? Why do you agree with that statement? Give me some evidence. Anyone besides Jay or Edwin may answer. <laughs> Nirkula, you're also exempted. Why would somebody not read Bhagavad Gita? Yes? Why would they not read it? Yes. Why would, it Why would they not read This is a valid question. It comes up in the beginning of the Bhagavad Kova Bhagavatas Tasya Punyushloka Karmana. The sages at Daimasarani said, Why wouldn't people read the Bhagavatam? This seems. Uh, rather um, uh, inept to not read the Bhagavatam. Why would they do that? So why would somebody read the Bhagavad Gita? So Who knows like, about the Bhagavad Gita? Like you said, someone might be literate. Or somebody who's literate, <coughs> who knows about the Bhagavad Gita, who's be, from India. They might be. Well, <laughs> <laughs> See, that's another thing. I'm, my friend, he was told he didn't have to read so much because he didn't like to read. So they just told him to like, chant. And he can't stop. 
Well, whoever they is. You know them pretty well. Well, my, my main premise here is that the Bhagavad Gita is very important. And it's, it's so obvious that one might miss it. Prabhupada said, sadhus sometimes live by the Ganga and then they go elsewhere to take bath because they always just the Ganga. <laughs> so Bhagavad Gita, in the midst of uh, our entire culture and all the things that we do, we might overlook the power of the Bhagavad Gita. Rupa Goswami doesn't. In his Laku Bhagavatam Rita, he, he extols the glories of Bhagavad Gita saying, listen, this is directly spoken by Krishna. This is a, the, the most important literature that we have. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's mission really was that not only to teach the chanting of Hare Krishna, but also teach the tenets of Bhagavad Gita. And what does Krishna say in the 18th chapter of the Bhagavad Gita about people who do that? He says, there's no one more dear to me than the person who teaches the Bhagavad Gita to others. So I'm just, uh, as a reminder to myself, again and again, coming back to the Bhagavad Gita and making it one staple in life, you'll find that those who regularly read the Bhagavad Gita are standouts. Everywhere you go, if you find, it doesn't matter what age they are, but if they regularly read the Bhagavad Gita, they're really on top of everything. They, they know what to say, and they know how the philosophy fits together, because the Bhagavad Gita is the foundation to our whole philosophy. And if you don't prepare the foundation properly, then you, you won't be able to sustain over a long period of time. So it's, it's highly recommended. Now, we, we have a system for uh, reading Prophet's books. One of them is called Chad. That is a chapter a day of Bhagavad Gita. Who likes that idea? Who likes that idea who's not already Chad member? Yeah, you. What is your name? Huh? Aryan. Aryan. I like you, Aryan. He likes Bhagavad Gita. Plus, he's a musician. He likes Madonga. This is Aryan. Stand right over here. This is a credit card. I'm going to give you this credit card. This is it your first one? No. <laughs> Who's your mom and dad? I want to move in with you. <laughs> okay, so this is a Chad card, and you can use it at fine institutions anywhere. Write your name on this with a Sharpie, and you can chant one chapter of Bhagavad Gita every day, okay? Then you're a member of Chad, and now you're a card-carrying member. <laughs> okay, give him a hand. <laughs> Who else thinks that Reading a chapter of Bhagavad Gita is a good idea. Okay, come on up here. Come on up. If you think it's a good idea, come up. We're going to give you a Chad card. Would you like to be a member of Chad? Of course. Okay. Please welcome her to Chad. I know you. You're fired up. She's a member of Chad. Give her a hand. Chad. Kids, come on up here. Kids, you're coming up. You come on up here now. Edwin, what a pleasure. Thank you. Chant one chapter of Gita a day, okay? Say yes. same thing. Okay, that's called Chad Plus. <laughs> <laughs> chapter a day of Bhagavad Gita is called Chad, and Chad Plus means you add also a chapter of Bhagavatam a day. <laughs> Want a refund? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Go ahead. All right. What's your name? Okay, he's, he's joining Chad. Come on up here. Welcome to Chad. Read with your friends. Read one chapter of Bhagavad Gita a day, okay? Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Good for you. Hare Krishna. These kids rock. Look at them. Very good. You can all chant it together, okay? One chapter Bhagavad Gita. Very good. Good for you. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Excellent. I don't have much time. I'm going to need two. Two? Yeah, okay. two chapters a day. Maybe I'll catch up. Okay. Hare Krishna. <laughs> Thank you very much. So, 
Any of you that change your mind later and you'd like to join chat, you can see me afterwards, I'll give you a card, okay? And the other uh, system we have, and it's important to have systems to hold one's spiritual practice in place, is called BSH page by page. You say that. BSH page by page. Yeah, several years back I discovered that it was intimidating look at all the Prabhupada's books because I realized I don't have that much time and how would I read all of the books? And then I read a piece by Brian Tracy and he said, any big task can be put into small segments and then implemented into one's life and then one can complete the task. So in order to do that, I counted all the pages in Prabhupada's books and then made a little chart. And in this chart, it tells you each one of Prabhupada's books and then it, it gives... Here, find the chat cards, please. And then it tells you how many pages you have to read of each book every day in order to finish the whole book in a given period of time. So Neil Amada Prabhu said that if, if you read 47 pages, it's actually 41. If you read 41 pages of, of the Bhagavatam every day, then you'll finish the whole thing in a year. Now, if, if you want to finish it in five years, you can do eight pages a day. That's right on this card. And for those of you who have a smartphone, anybody in Baltimore have smartphones yet? <laughs> Two, three people. Four people, okay. We also have an app. So the app is available for free on the, at the App Store for both uh, iPhone and whatever that other thing is. What's Android. it called? Android, yeah. So uh, you can go there and download the app. It's under Be a Sage, page by page, okay? Anyone want to try it right now just to verify? He's got it. You're so fast. Look at it. Hold it up so they can see. So on there, you'll find a little picker wheel, and you can pick any of Prophet's books. There's a lot of exciting new um, features that are coming into this app, too. For instance, you can monitor how many pages you read every day and, and push a little button. And then uh, you'll be represented on a screen that has a picture of Govardhan Hill. And you'll be going around Govardhan Hill, and every time... You click the button, you move a little further around. And when you, get, when you finish your quota, then you'll go all the way around Govardhan Hill. Okay? Hare Krishna. So, um, one of the other ways in, in to feel very connected with Krishna is to meet people who are not so familiar with the Bhagavad Gita and give them an opportunity to read it. It, it gives one a, a fresh a way of approaching life. It's to, um, wherever one goes, introduce the Bhagavad Gita to, other, to others. And this can be done in various ways. One of the ways you can do it is take prasadam with you wherever you go. Anybody have access to prasadam here? One person only. We'll have to come to Shama Bhakti to get prasadam. Two people. Okay, so if you ha if you, there's a way in which you can get your hands on some prasadam, then wherever you go, distribute prasadam. And when you find, did we hear a cell phone? Yes. yes. Okay, that's one, one case of Bhagavad Gita. So let's give them a hand, whoever that was. You want a lot of them? You can collect. He's done one case. It's only $107. I'm going to make it the dollar. Okay? All right. We've done one case. We have 59 to go. So, I highly recommend distributing Bhagavad Gita. It is, it is the light of the world. And books are vessels. When they go out into the world, they have their effect. They change people's hearts. People read them and they take in the information. They have the capability of doing that. The strategy of distributing mass quantities of books is a viable uh, strategy for changing society. I've written about it extensively in my book, Our Family Business, which is no longer my book. I gave the copyrights to the BBT. I get nothing from it except for the satisfaction of passing on any knowledge that I've gained over the last 45 years of distributing books. And in that book, I make the case uh, that by mass distribution of Bhagavad Gita, uh, a society can change just as much as it's changed by the distribution of other books uh, like Origin of the Species, which none of you have. 
but all of you know the theory of evolution. It came from a book. And similarly, Thomas's, Thomas Paine's booklet that he distributed in the colonies here in America, uh, which is uh, called Common Sense, uh, was, is still the best-selling book of all time per capita. And that book uh, inspired the colonists to rise up in revolution. Confirmed? Yes. And so distributing mass quantities of Bhagavad Gita will similarly change the world. It's a good strategy. And previously, when we did these uh, drives for people to take full cases of books, oftentimes you take a full case of Bhagav Bhagavad Gita and then put it in your garage. And then the next year would come and we'd make another um, a pledge drive and then you'd say, oh, I already have it. But now we have the wherewithal to immediately distribute these books as if there's an IV set up already. And all we have to do is change the bag. And so we have unlimited ways in which to put Bhagavad Gita into a mainstream use immediately. For instance, through the Motel Gita program. Every year in this area, uh, Loka Prabhu puts out about 10,000 Bhagavad Gitas. Is that correct? 13,000 Bhagavad Gitas. Oh. And they, of course, that number is contingent on us doing a few more cases tonight. Are you with me? You're feeling what I'm saying, right? Resonating? Yes. Say yes. 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 Thank you. And they go out and they immediately get consumed by the Motel Gita program. People are taking them from the motels and asking, can I take this home with me? They're so impressed with the Bhagavad Gita. People are becoming devotees. We're meeting people all over the world that are picking them up, reading them, and then they're delighted to see us again because they, they, they're interested in more. That's one of the ways. There's also uh, various other outlets, including hand-to-hand. -hand. So the Bhagavad Gitas are definitely going out. There's uh, a growing demand for, the, for these kinds of Gitas. So whatever Bhagavad Gitas you care to sponsor for the upcoming <coughs> event that we're having uh, will get utilized immediately. Now, if you envision a large fire pit in which we're doing a yagya, and you see that fire pit, as the priest is putting in the ghi, then you would say, swaha, and you could offer your grains to yagneshvara. So in a similar way, in a household or community, one of the best ways to perform sacrifice is to sponsor transcendental literature. And in that way, when you put your um, contribution, you need to say, this many dollars, I'm going to purchase Bhagavad Gita. This is a kind of sacrifice that you make into the fire of Sankirtan. And when we do these kind of drives, we imagine a large pit, and every time somebody sponsors a case of Bhagavad Gita, it's like that swaha, you're putting it in to the fire. Now there's a trick about sacrifice that is very important. It's to remember this. Whatever resources you have now in your life, including your money, you're going to either lose or give away by force, one way or another. Those are probably the same concepts. Because uh, money goes. It doesn't stay around. Lakshmi is chanchal. She moves from here to there. So an intelligent person will reason like this, that if I preemptively give my money to Krishna, then I get full credit for it. If I wait until it's usurped, taken away by another force, what other force? Government? Death, that's pretty extreme, yes? Family? Yeah, Uncle Dilip will call you and say, look, I need a kidney transplant, you're the only, only one in the family that's got money. You know what you gotta do? You gotta hand it over. But if you just gave all your money to the, I mean, poor Delete, but anyway, <laughs> you give your money to, I just gave all my money for Gita's, Uncle Delip. I'm sorry I can't help you with a kidney right now. Um, preemptive giving is very intelligent. And I'll tell you a joke I heard many years ago. There are two guys walking down the street in New York City. And a gunman jumps out. He says, okay, you guys, give me all your money. And these two friends had been walking along, and one of the friends says to the other, 
uh, or he says to the gunman, it's a no problem, I'll give you the money, but just wait one second. He takes out his wallet, takes out $20, and he turns to his friend. He says, Steve, here's the $20 that I owe you. <laughs> so one must consider the fact that one way or another, whatever resources we have will be extracted so if you can hand them over for the most worthy cause, which Lord uh, Shukadev Goswami says of Lord Shiva, he says, Tapyante Lukatapena Sarva Prayasojana Parama Araranam Tati Purushasyaki Lamana. He says the highest kind of worship you can do of the Supreme Lord is to make some sacrifice for the sake of helping. Uh, those who are suffering in the material world. So to that end, uh, we have pulled a truck up to the side of the building. It's full of cases of Bhagavad Gita's. In those cases of Bhagavad Gita's are very rare copies of the Bhagavad Gita as it is. I say rare because in previous ages, just a few years ago, all books were available only by hand copy. So we pulled this truck up. We have copies uh, as uh, 400 years ago, you could not get these copies because every book was written by hand. And how long would it take? Sir, what is your name in the, in the back? Dinesh. No, in, next to the window, sitting next to the window. Dinesh. Dinesh, how long would it take you to copy by hand the entire Bhagavad Gita as it is? Two years, okay. So we have... 24 copies in each box times two years, right? That's 48 years worth of writing by Dinesh <laughs> in each box. But somehow or other, by a miracle, by Krishna's arrangement, we have high-speed offset printing in which we're able to mass-produce these books. This is a window that uh, has never been seen before in history to print books like this. So those books are there available. and. We are deliberately distributing them in order to create a revolution in society. So we, we're inviting everyone to, who would like to sponsor one or more cases of the Bhagavad Gita. Nachari Armarman, Nachari Armarman, Nachari Armarman, Nachari Armarman, hey, Nachari Armarman, Nachari Armarman. Not to the arm, my man, not to the arm, my man.